This here is live prepper Waller Joan here. I want to talk to you about something that's really a serious subject. If the SHTF happens and you hear all of us going on about it, you hear other preppers talk about it and all this stuff, and I know you think we're all crazy. But that's okay if you think we're a left field. Now, I'm not too extremist like some of them saying, you know, down with this and down with that. What I'm saying is, is this is real simple. Point blank, no other way. If a SHTF situation happens and it's worldwide, this is what you're going to look at. It's not like an isolated incident, like a Hurricane Katrina or Hurricane Sandy or earthquake in another part of the world. It's not an isolated incident where it's a city or a, a state or whatever has been affected where they can come in and help you. And the thing is, though, it isn't just the government does all that. You've got the Red Cross, the United Way. You've got countless organizations and people volunteering their time to come in and help with all the situations, to help on all of that. But if it's a worldwide event, we are going to be overloaded. The government's going to come in and do what they can to help. But I'm going to tell you something other. Their protocol requires them in a situation like that, if it's a worldwide event, in a situation, they have underground barricades and communities built for them to live in for a number of years. And as people, as they progress on science and everything, make technology even more, and the solar and the wind power, they'll have their own food situation set up, their own greenhouses set up. They'll be raising their own foods. They'll be living underground, and it'd be those that's chosen to go there. It will be people who is in a government capacity with family and stuff, and those chosen friends that can go, and people who are financially able to buy billion-dollar shelters built underground or whatever it is to live on. Then it's going to leave the rest of us out here. Not saying that the government is not going to help us the best way they can. The thing is, is that they will not have the means or the way to do it. Once the food runs out, the backup food will be gone. Then they have nothing left to give the people except to take care of their own people, their own military. That is what's going to happen. The military and everything will have to have their food. They're not going to give up the food of the military people to give to the civilians. They're going to have to make sure they're taken care of. And the same way it's going to be for the purpose of running automobiles and trucks and all that. They are going to have to use it for the government capacity. So that means nothing for us. Now I'm not saying that they're in a the wrong. Because in a situation like that, you have to make choices. And I understand that. That's something you have to do. What I'm telling you is that only a fool. And yes, I said food. We'll think the government is going to solve it all for you. You have to think outside the box, as I say all the time. And like I said in one of my videos, can you name 10 plants? Most people can't. Most of them don't even know how to harvest it, let alone live off of it. And another thing, if you do go to the camps that they set up, the FEMA camps or the relief camps, you don't know. How long that's going to last? What's going to happen in a worldwide situation is that people are going to be bombarded. Hospitals are going to be overrun. Everything's going to go crazy. And then you're going to have those out there who flat out just don't care. You've seen them on TV talk about, you've read articles where these countries, these reliefs, where they would send food to them and the government itself, the government of the very country would steal the food and the medicines, and put it for ransom. And people would have to buy it back just to get their medicines. Now this here is government officials who's supposed to be taking care of their people, but what they're doing is stealing the meds. They're stealing their food. you got people putting it on the black market. And that's going to happen here in the United States. If that situation happens, it is going to happen worldwide. If it happens worldwide and SHTF happens, that's what's going to happen. You're going to have those who's going to be delivering this stuff to help people. And then you're going to be having those who are going to steal it and who are going to sell it or they're going to keep it for themselves. 
So do not count on the government to take care of everything. The government, once they run out, then they're going to run out. They're going to say, whoa, wait a minute. i got to do something here. So I've got my military people I need to take care of. i got to feed them. Whoa, wait a minute. I've got my shelter here, and I can't give them my food here. Well, you know, we got our food here. We're living here in this shelter, nice, safe, and happy. I can't give them our food, so they're out of luck right there. Whoa, wait a minute. I see some children and stuff out there, but nope, can't bring them in there. We are only can only only got so much food to feed so many people, so we can't bring them in there. And they might have a disease or something, and we can't afford to catch it. So once they lock those doors up, and they go behind those doors, and they take care of everything from behind the doors, you better prepare to take care of yourself. You better prepare to take care of your family, and you better prepare to take care of your friends with you. You better prepare to take care of this community situation, whether you are in a group or by yourself. You need to learn. You need to have books to learn how. Can you set a broken bone? Most people can't. Do you know what to do in event of uh, blood poisoning? Do you know what plants are out there that can help you survive the winter from a flu or from being sick or nausea or whatever it is? Do you know what plants out there is antibacterial? Do you know what plants out there feed you? I want to tell you. People has gotten so dependent, going down to the store every couple of days or so, and I go too. People's got dependent going to the restaurants and eating, and I go too. People's got dependent on going saying, hey, I need help. And they go get help. But at the same time, over the years, it has shown, if you look at it, over the years, the government has cut more and more and more programs. I remember as a child, we used to get in line. And get free cheese and powdered milk that was given to us from the government as a surplus food. They cut it off. I remember my mom, who is a veteran, would go once a month down to the VA program in Lebanon and get free food. They cut the program off and shut it down. So we can't give you no more. They've cut the military down to two meals a day, not giving them breakfast anymore. But the government officials ain't doing it without. They're not doing it without that $100 bottle of champagne or that pricey carpet they're buying. So you need to think about all this. You do not need to count on the government for everything. Not saying the government's bad. Government helps out in lots of ways. If it wasn't for the food stamps, I probably wouldn't have nothing to eat sometimes. But is my food stamps going to last forever? No. I finally got a job working maybe 25 hours a week. You know what that means? I'm still not going to have enough to cover my bills. That means I've got to find a second job. That means I've got to figure out somehow to take care of my bills each month. Because the winter months are coming on. But that means I've got to take care of myself. So in a SHTF situation, if you don't know what plants are out there as medical, you don't know what plants out there you can eat on, you don't know how to survive from one day to the next, and you're counting on the government to take care of everything, and if you've got a bad health situation, and you're counting on that medication to be there for you. And when it runs out, and you're going to go to the FEMA camps and the relief camps, and then when people start getting sick and stuff, you're counting on the government to take care of you, you better start thinking. You better start taking care of yourself because there's only so much the government can do. Because once the medical supplies runs out, once the food runs out, once the relief runs out, if it gets into an SHTF situation, you're going to have to count on yourself. And you're going to have to figure out what you are going to do. So don't count on the government for everything. Stand on your own two feet and count for yourself. Start learning. Start learning what's out there. I guarantee you, you don't know what 10 plants, most of you don't, what 10 plants is going to make a difference whether you make it or not. So you need to start reading. You need to start studying. You need to start thinking outside that box. And you need to start thinking in a what-if situation if SHTF does hit not just with a local town or a local state in a situation. If it happens worldwide, what am I going to do? So don't count on the government. They can only do so much. You have to count on yourself. So from the world of Joan, life prepper here, stand on your own two feet and think about what you got to do for yourself in a situation like that. Don't count on the government. They're, they can only do so much.